Hey everyone, it's Iman and welcome back. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna walk through the step-by-step -step process for calculating the uh, redundancy factor using a flowchart. Let's get started. Okay, quick refresher from last time. Uh, in the seismic load combinations, the redundancy factor multiplies the seismic load. Um, so if a structure, <coughs> excuse me, has a low degree of indeterminacy, meaning that there are not many alternate load paths, um, its seismic load must be increased by 30%. That's uh, exactly what the redundancy factor does. So uh, if you want to understand the concept of redundancy factor and some keynotes about it, um, check out my previous video and I'll uh, put the link in the description. All right, uh, let's dive into the flowchart. Okay, start here. Is your structure in seismic design category B or C? If yes, you're done. Row is one. No further checks needed, okay? If it's D, E, or F, then we have to go through the rest of the process. Okay, now, step two. We run a linear analysis with all elements in place. Step three. Find the stories where their shear is bigger than 35% of the uh, base shear. And here is an example that we talked about it in the previous uh, video that you can check it out if you want. So um, in this example, at the first, second, and the third stories, the, the story shear is bigger than 35% of the base shear. Okay. Okay, step four. Um, for stories that shear is greater than 35% of the base shear, we first check item B of ASC 7. Basically, the structure must be regular in plan at all levels. And you need to at least um, two bays of seismic force resisting perimeter framing or shear walls on each side of the center of mass in both directions. And remember, uh, when we have shear walls, there's a special way to count the uh, number of bays. Okay. I covered that in the last, uh, in last video. So check that, that one out if you need to, uh, if you need to know uh, the details, okay? So if item B satisfied, again, you're done. Row is one. If no, uh, keep going and go to step five. In step five, ask yourself, is there extreme torsional irregularity for those stories? If yes, again, you're done. But this time, row is 1.3. No further checks, okay? If no, go to step six. Is the seismic force resisting system made up entirely of shear walls or wall piers whose height to length ratio is one or less? Uh, quick heads up before we move on. Uh, watch out for the way this ratio uh, is written. In item B, it talks about uh, L over H. But when you look at uh, step six, it uses the opposite format. It's height to length. And uh, And remember, for a shear wall, that ratio, h over l, is the total um, height of the wall uh, divided by its length. And for a, a pier wall, it's the pier height divided by uh, its pier length. Okay? All right, anyway, uh, be aware. Step six. Okay, anyway, if the condition in step six is met, then you're done. Row is one. Otherwise, we go to step seven. 
In step seven, basically we identify the lateral force resisting element whose removal causes the greatest torsion in that story. And then we remove that element and do a linear analysis. Okay. And uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to pick the most uh, critical element to remove. Okay. Now we go to a step eight. So in step seven, we remove an element. So we have uh, a weakened uh, structure, right? We check. Uh, do we now have extreme torsional irregularity? If yes, you're done. Rho is 1.3. If no, uh, we go to a step nine, which is basically uh, the strength check. This time, uh, we look for the element whose removal causes the biggest strength loss in this story. So um, it's not about the layout or torsion or twisting. This is about the story of strength. Okay. So just to be clear, in step seven, you remove the element that causes the biggest, uh, the most torsion. Or the, okay. And in step nine, you remove the element that causes uh, the biggest strength reduction. Okay. So don't mix them up. All right. Uh, step ten. Um, and this step, an initial estimate of the reduction in uh, lateral strength of the story is, is performed. So according to this table from ASC 7, after removing an element, the reduction in strength should not exceed uh, 33%. Okay. Um, this basically corresponds to uh, the two methods defined in this table for estimating story strength, the linear method and the nonlinear method. Nonlinear analysis is more time consuming and uh, costly. So in step nine, we first use the linear analysis method uh, to estimate the change in member stress ratios uh, relative to the original structure. Okay. So when we remove a key element, we do a linear analysis under 67% of the original seismic load. Why 67%? Because the code wants to make sure the system can still function after a 33% strength loss. So it's just 100 minus 33. Okay, that's how uh, we get 67%. After this reduction, ask yourself, are the stress ratios for all elements still lower than the original structure? If yes, then go to a step 12. And if all other uh, likely elements have been checked, then uh, we can assign rho equals one. If not, go to a step 11. And uh, run a nonlinear analysis. In step 11, ask yourself, uh, does removing the element cause more than 33% uh, reduction in story height? Uh, if yes, then rho equals 1.3. If not, go to step 12. All right, um, that's it. And one last thing, this chart is adapted from FEMA P-751 but I've made a few changes uh, to make it clearer. All right, that wraps up this part. Uh, in the next video, I'll walk you through how to actually do the element removal process in DFAPS. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.